Hello I'm Karen and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how to make these different bows. Um, these are a little bit bigger than the previous bows and these have been inspired by a piece of pottery and I'm just going to show you the piece of pottery and this is the image here and as you can see we've got um, a little wave that's going across with the pottery and we've got the lines which are starting off smaller and getting bigger and actually these are forming two dots above each other and then they're coming back down again. Okay, this is an actual um, piece of pottery that was found in Rothley in Leicester and it's grooved ware pottery and I shall tell you a little bit more about the pottery at a later point. Okay, so I'm going to move these out of my way and today I'm going to be working with a four millimetre crochet hook and I'm using a double knit yarn which um, one of my viewers has kindly put up this is actually a, a worsted weight yarn um, oh sorry a light worsted weight yarn in America my hook is a so it's a four millimeter hook it's also a G6 in the US and um, in old English <laughs> terms it's actually a number eight hook <clears throat> So what we're going to do is we're going to begin with a chain of 31. I'm doing my twist to start off with. You can start with your slip knot if you prefer. We're going to do 31. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30 and 31. <clears throat> we're going to skip the first chain and then we're going to work underneath one strand of each of the chains all the way back. We're working in sequences of three. So we're going to begin with um, a single crochet in the US or a double crochet in the UK. So that's one, two, three and then we're going to go up to the next stitch which is the half double or the half treble. One, two, three and then we're going to go up to the next stitch which is the double in the US or the treble in the UK. That's one, two oops, and three. Then we're going to go back down again with our stitches. So we're going to go back down to the half double or the half treble. That's one, two, three and then down to the single or the double crochet. One, two and three and that I'm now at my halfway point and as you can see I've started to create what looks like a little bridge. We're going to begin the sequence again. So we're still using the same stitch, which is the single or the double, which is one, two, three, and my yarn's tangling up on me. Up to the half double or the half treble crochet. One, two, whoops, three, and then up to the double, one, two, three, down to the half double or the half treble, one, two, three, and then the last three stitches are going to be double crochet if you're in the UK or a single crochet if you're in the US. And that's my three stitches. 
row two is chain one, turn and repeat the sequence. So we're going to do the single crochet or the double crochet into the same stitches. So that's one, two, this one's three and then up to the half double or the half treble one, two, three up to the double crochet or the treble crochet one, two, three and then down to the half double again one or the half treble two, three and then down to the single or the double one, two and three. I'm at my halfway point so we're going to begin the sequence again. So that's one, two, three, up to the half double or the half treble, one, two, three, and then up to the double crochet if you're in the US or the treble if you're in the UK. That's two and three and then back down to the half double or the half treble. That's one, two, three and then we're going to do the single or the double crochet. That's one, two and the very last stitch is just tipped over a little bit so you've just got to make sure you go underneath the two strands and do your stitch there. Chain one, turn, repeat the sequence again. So that's one, two, three, up to the next stitch, one, two, three, up to the double or the treble, one, two, three and then back down to the half double or the half treble, one, two, three and single crochet or the double crochet, one, two and three. I'm at my halfway point so begin the sequence again, one, two, three, up to the next stitch, one, two, three, up to the next stitch, one, two, three, down to the half double or the half treble, one, two, Oops, a daisy, it went underneath one strand there. Three, and then the last single crochet or the double crochet. One, two, and, whoops, <laughs> three. Last row, chain one, turn, and we're repeating the sequence again. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's the single crochet or the double crochet. So that's one two and three and then the half double or the half treble one two three and then up to the double or the treble depending on which country you're in that was one two and three <coughs> sorry and then down to the half treble or the half double, one, two, three and the single or the double crochet, one, two, three. I'm at my halfway point, one, two, three, up to the half double or the half treble, one, 
two, three, up to the double crochet in the US or the treble in the UK, that's one, two, three, oops, easy, and then back down, one, two, three, and then we're going to do the single crochet or the double crochet in the last three. And that was the last row. And if you stop and look at your work, you will see not only have you got the wave going up and down, but because you've kept these stitches over the top of each other, you've also got this nice curve. And I personally thought I could make something else out of this on a bigger scale, so I'm going to show you when I've finished this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip stitch all the way around. I'm going to start in the same space that I actually did the very last single crochet. And we're just going to slip stitch all the way around just to give us a nice, neat, tidy edge. And when we get to the um, here, this is where we did the very beginning chain. We're going to go underneath two strands this time and work our way all the way right around our piece of work. And this is where I can tell you a little bit more about the pottery. Um, and the grooved wear pottery is a particular style from our ancient ancestors, um, dated to be, the one in Leicester um, was dated to be about 3,300 years old, I think that one was. I may be mistaken with that. Um, there wasn't a lot of details, to be fair, on um, on the Leicester's university site about that particular piece of pottery. Um, but the actual design of the pottery, because I did my research, actually originated in Orkney Islands. And the Orkney Islands, if you don't know where they are, are just above Scotland. So, um, and on their older pieces of work, they actually created um we would the, the the pattern that we would call it we would call it a chevron pattern um and there is an actually an older piece <laughs> i say because it all originated in scotland which actually has um the indentation of a mat now nobody's saying for sure what they actually made the mat out of all they know is that they were a circular piece of what they believe is some kind of fabric was made and they're not sure at this moment whether that fabric was made out of wool or whether it was made out of heather um, because apparently they used to make a twine out of heather so that's what's inspired my piece of work today and I know many of you may have come across this um, kind of design with working with the all of your stitches all in one go and if I just stop there a minute because I actually created um, a wave piece where you, you've you've got your double crochets here or your triple crochet and then you've got the single ones over the top of it so it, it forms a wave I don't know if you can see the colours properly on there I actually did that in <clears throat> white and pink um, but then say that's what inspired me to create this piece and while I was actually um, <laughs> I was I would say messing about because I that's how I consider it when I'm actually coming up with a new design um, like, like this one like I said while I was actually crocheting it and I saw all the curves and it was like oh I know what else I can make out of that <laughs> so I will be sharing you sharing you sharing with you what else I've actually made from this one um, but I haven't actually got I'm not um, I'm not going to go into too many details because obviously it was a bigger piece of work but I just thought I'd just share it with you just so that you know um, oh, and by the way I'm sorry I didn't say this is a slip stitch in the um, US but this is actually a single crochet in the UK that we're doing all the way around the edges so uh, we're nearly there at the very end and then when we finish doing our 
slip stitching or our single crocheting around the edge we're going to need um, a wide eyed darning needle to sew the ends together okay so I'm nearly there a couple more stitches left to go and then that'll be the end of this um, particular piece of work and also I will say what I've done is I've actually prepared the actual tie already to be able to tie it up because it actually takes as long to create the tie oops a daisy as it does to create this actual piece of work which really surprised me and I thought you don't want me um, babbling away <laughs> Well, some people don't some people don't mind but I'm just doing a chain um, at the end of that just to keep that piece nice there and then I'm going to get my wide-eyed darning needle well I've left myself a long tail end on there haven't I never mind I can trim it off and then what I did um because I wanted to keep my work nice and flat when I sewed it together um because as you can see as I've gone around the edges there I've made I'll pull that in um, it's not the best, I suppose, in some senses. But what I'm going to do is going to go underneath the two strands of the actual slip stitch, so that I'm, when I'm joining my pieces together, so I'm going to come underneath two strands, and pull these together like that, and then I'm going to come back and then come into this piece of work here. So this gives you a nice flat seam and I know you could have actually have done a slip stitch together or um single crocheted it together then it would have made you a little ridge and when you're actually tying the tie around it the ridge got in the way so it was best in my opinion anyway to actually sew this piece so it's nice and flat I'm going to come over to that stitch there You will end up with a shape like this, which is a bit like a little bangle or a bracelet, depending on how you want to say it. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether they call them bracelets or bangles in the in the US. But anyway, I'm just going to tuck my end underneath there. I'm not going to do. Whoops! I did, I've pulled that one through. Cut these two pieces off, if I can, so that they're out of the way. I'm just going to cut them short in there because when we fold over so then you've got your bow so this is the back of the bow and that's the front of the bow and this piece here that I've made as a tie what I did is I made a chain of 70 I'm just folding that so that it's halfway point I made a chain of 71 and then did the slip stitch or the single crochet all the way down to the other end of it then at the very, very end, I did another chain of just one chain. Make sure that's equal in the middle. I'm just going to trim off these ends just to get them out of my way more than anything. And there you go. Um, so what I did is say is I did the chain, chained all the way across, single, um, single crochet or slip stitch all the way back, chain one, and then went all the way back again just to give it this thicker, um, wrap around to be able to create the bow <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is hopefully if I can do everything correctly I'm going to move all of my work out of the way sorry I hope the focus is still there and I'm going to show you this is the bigger piece that I made which you know me <laughs> I like my uh, um, Neolithic bikini tops and there you go this is made with exactly the same um, stitches um, on, but on this one what I've done is I've used a number five hook I've used Aran yarn which is a thicker yarn to go with the number five hook and I've done the sequences in sets of five and then I've just added this pretty little piece of my um, cluster stitch at the top and so you'd have it you'd wear it like this these two would tie up around your neck and this ties around the back or you can have this one here around your neck and then these around the back Um, I did it like this so that it just I thought it was really pretty and if I get the white bow 
and put the white bow in the centre um, you can really pretty it up so there we go um, my grooved wear pottery inspired bow and bikini top all in one so there we go thank you for watching thank you for liking thank you for sharing thank you for, for subscribing thank you for all your lovely comments i am reading all of your comments um have that many comments and that many things that come to me i really i can't respond to everybody so i just i read everything and then i'll try and mention things in my videos okay thanks again bye for now